Welcome, everybody, to Crystal Kyle and Friends. Uh, we have Adolf Reed on the show today. Adolf Reed, very prominent leftist. Yes. I might say. Great thinker. One of uh, my favorites. Yeah. So, we're, you know, sort of, we, we've had uh, no big deal or anything, but we've had the legendary Noam Chomsky on and Cornell West, and now we have <laughs> Adolf Reed, but whatever. It doesn't even matter. I don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah, um, he's working on uh, a new book that's about to come out called uh, The South Jim Crow and Its Afterlives. He's working on a podcast called Class Matters, has just been one of the most astute observers of politics, race, class, the left um, for really decades. He, in my view, is truly a national treasure, and I'm excited to get to talk to What's him. What's the thing he said about Obama that you sent me the other night? Yeah, so, um, you know— This was pre-Obama being Obama. This yeah, was... so this was back in Chicago when Obama is just coming up. Uh, Adolf Reed pens this column for The Village Voice in which he says, In Chicago, we've gotten a foretaste of the new breed of foundation-hatched black communitarian voices— one of them, a smooth Harvard lawyer with impeccable do-good credentials and vacuous to repressive neoliberal politics, has won a state Senate seat on a base mainly in the liberal foundation and development worlds. His fundamentally bootstrap line was softened by a patina of the rhetoric of authentic community. Talk about meeting a kitchen, small-scale solutions to social problems, and the predictable elevation of process over program. The point where identity politics converges with old-fashioned middle-class reform in favor form over substance and he goes on to predict that he thinks this model will be the new one of for politics so. talk about a prediction yeah good googly moogly that right. was crazy he yeah. totally nailed it and and that's the way his observations are very you know tend to be very uh prescient and on point so. no that certainly is prescient and on point mm -hmm. um so before we get to that let's talk a little bit about this uh so this is something chris cuomo has probably the most unlikely defender you could ever imagine <laughs> one tucker carlson on fox news um so why don't we go ahead and run that first video but Andrew Cuomo was Chris Cuomo's brother. And that's what you do with brothers, even the loathsome ones. You help them when they need it, period. It's called loyalty. At CNN, as at the rest of the media, this is an alien concept. Is there a single person at CNN or any other left-wing network who would risk his job to help his own brother? No. Above all these people are careerists, ruthless careerists. They would betray anyone to get ahead. If Jeff Zucker told this guy to denounce his own wife on television, do you think he'd hesitate before doing it? Well, of course he wouldn't, not for a second. So when we tell you that the media are corrupt, we don't just mean they're corrupt politically. It is much deeper than that. They don't acknowledge the most important rules in life. Your first obligation is to your family. Your first obligation is not to the state, it's not to a political party. It's not to Jeff Zucker or some creepy billionaires at the Atlantic Magazine. It's not even to your own career. Your most basic obligation is to the people you are related to. When they need your help, no matter who they are, even if they're the governor of a state, even if they're horrible people, you help them anyway, because it's your family. Chris Cuomo may be an idiot, and he is, but he understands that. What a thing to be fired for. Wow. I did not see that one coming. What a sanctimonious prick. So yeah. let me explain exactly why he's wrong here. Okay. He's not wrong about, oh, you help your family no matter what. I think like 98% of people would help their family no matter what. There are some limits, but yes. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. If somebody commits a quadruple murder and yeah, raped sure. a baby, like, of course, there, right. there are limits. But generally speaking, yes, you help your family Believe no matter family what. Loyalty. What he's not telling you is there is a dichotomy here. You want to help your brother? Fine. Resign from your shitty CNN show. Period. Okay, your job is to be a journalist. Your job is to be a reporter. You have failed at that time and time and time again. You had Andrew Cuomo on your show joking around about mom spaghetti in your Sunday dinners, holding large Q-tips for no apparent reason, <laughs> giving him fluff jobs on a regular basis, covering up his corruption. At the time he was on the show, there was already the story where Andrew Cuomo opened up this anti-corruption commission, and then as soon as that commission looked into him and his allies, he shut it down. Right. One of Andrew Cuomo's top allies is in prison because he was corrupt. There's a thousand scandals I could talk about involving Andrew Cuomo. The other one, the bridge in New York that's named after his father, they used the wrong supplies on the bridge, which made the bridge dangerous. Then he tried to cover it up. 
Right. The number of, of scandals around Andrew Cuomo are endless. I haven't even touched the COVID ones yet. Right. I mean, the fact that this guy... Nursing home, covering up Nursing death, home. How many people stuff. died because Andrew Cuomo was like, nah, send the COVID positive Using people back in there. resources covered it up. to write his book. As he's covering up the deaths of these people in the nursing home, he's getting paid millions of dollars to write a book on how he defeated COVID. Are you fucking kidding me? Your job as a journalist was not to give your brother... Nothing but endless praise on air. And then the second the shit hits the fan, he comes out there and what does he say? Oh, I can't talk about it because I have a, pro a professional can't responsibility can't to not cover brother. it. So you could cover it when it was nothing but uh, puppies good. and rainbows and singing kumbaya and holding hands. And now you can't cover it because it's negative stuff. Get out of here. Yeah. So you want to be loyal to your family? Fine. Leave your show. But what does Tucker Carlson do? He just does a, a, an unmitigated defense of him. There's no caveats. There's no hedges. There's no drop your show. And this of all the times, Tucker would attack this guy no matter what. If fucking Chris Cuomo came out and said the sky's blue, Tucker would be like, it's not, it's fuck, it's a, it's, it's turquoise, it's turquoise, <laughs> but now is when you defend him? What a hack. He's just looking for an angle to attack another CNN host because he's just as big of a hack as Chris Cuomo is. Yes. He leaves something really important out of it. He tries to set up this false dichotomy between the career and the family. He leaves out of the equation the responsibility to the audience. That's right. The responsibility to, like, you know, portray the news and do your job as a journalist because people depend on that and because that's an important function within society. That's left out entirely. And as you're pointing out, he leaves out, like, this was the only option is to help your brother and lie to the public. No, he could have said... This is a time when my family needs me, my brother needs me, that's my top priority, and I'm either going to resign or I'm going to take a leave of absence, and I hope you'll understand that. There were other options on the table. And here's the other piece is, like, this dude lied about exactly how much he helped his brother. His He initially was, like, oh, it's just a couple of phone calls, and then more kept coming out, and so he ha kept having to cop to more and more. And I think even... He's friends, close friends with Jeff Zucker. I think he even was lying to Zucker about just how intimately involved here he was. And when the shit really hit the fan was when it came out that he was using his professional network to try to dig up dirt on Doing the Doing like the oppo women, research on these on, women. Right, on the women. Fine, go do that, but don't be a fucking journalist. You're not a journalist. Right. This isn't that difficult. Exactly, exactly. So look, I don't think anyone would fault, even though Andrew Cuomo is disgusting, and frankly, the sexual harassment, as disgusting as that was, is like the tip of the iceberg of all of the horrible things that he did and his abuse of power and whatever. But I don't think anyone would fault Chris Cuomo for helping his brother what we fault you for is lying to the public and doing being a failure as a journalist which again is an important function that's what we fault you for so this is absurd that he picks this point and it feels like like you said he just wants to take a shot at like another cnn anchor and he also because now other parts of the mainstream press are on board with Cuomo getting fired. He can't possibly like just, be on just board with that. mindless contrarianism. Let me mm -hmm. tell, let me explain to you guys something about contrarianism. Can, if you're a contrarian across the board, you're actually not a fucking contrarian. You're just as bandwagony as the people who are on the original bandwagon. It's actually more embarrassing because you're basing all your positions on whatever they are. I'm, I'm the, the opposite. opposite. Oh, at you're so fucking leading, intellectual. Wow. At least they're leading with the conventional wisdom. Right. Like staking yeah. out their claims first. You're just acting in reaction and he to what everybody this, else is doing. And he thinks this shit is like brave. It's not brave. You're just an idiot. And one more point before we throw to the next video, which is actually somehow worse. Um, he talks about the media is corrupt. Yeah, Tucker, they are including Fox News. Are you kidding me? Fox News is the Republican Party propaganda network, and you know it. Trump was a fake populist, and then when Trump got through his biggest legislative accomplishment, a tax cut for the top 1%, where 83% of the benefits went to the top 1%, Tucker and all of his allies on Fox News said Dickie McGee's acts as they posture like, I'm for the working man or whatever. Right. And then they pass this legislation, which is terrible for working people. He's got nothing to say about it. So yes, the media is corrupt. Fox News is the Republican Party propaganda network. Guess what? CNN is the Democratic Party propaganda network, as is MSNBC. That's the way it works. So, I, oh, I'm all for, let's talk about how the media is corrupt. Let's talk about that 24-7. But from Tucker Carlson, it's the last person I need to hear from, because you need to look in the mirror if you want to talk about corruption. Yeah, how about that? Um, here's a little piece of information about Tucker. Tucker Carlson, this is from Jacobin, slammed former President Obama in April 2017 for giving a $400,000 paid Wall Street speech, calling it, quote, indefensible. What could the former president possibly say, A, that we haven't heard, or B, that would be worth $400,000 for an hour, the Fox News host asked on his show. Five months later, Carlson and Obama both 
spoke at the same conference hosted by Wall Street giant oh. Carlyle Group, a private equity oh. colossus. Tell me more about corruption, prick. He bills more than 70 k per appearance, apparently. No word on exactly how much he made from the Carlyle Group. But um, Such yeah. a fraud. He's posturing. Yeah. It's garbage. All right, let's throw the next video because this is crazy. Jason Whitlock, I cannot believe I'm opening this show with you offering a kind of defense, maybe not of Chris Cuomo himself, who I do not like, but of his priorities. When you are called upon to help your brother, no matter what he's accused of, you help because he's your brother. Am I missing something? Tucker, uh, you're not missing anything at all, but I I I've got a completely different take on this in terms of what the overall lesson here is uh, for both Cuomo brothers. It, th they are the wrong complexion and they're heterosexual for the time that they're living in and they're finding out you can't be woke enough. And the Cuomo yeah. brothers have tried to play the woke game, but they're in the same crosshairs as every other heterosexual man in this country. And so given an opportunity to move on from Governor Cuomo and replace him with someone else, uh, the state of New York did that. Given an opportunity to replace Chris Cuomo now uh, under, you know, because he's defending his brother and he somehow uh, has run afoul of the Me Too movement of feminist and just the whole, in my view, the alphabet mafia, he, he doesn't fit the right profile. And so they're going to replace him with someone who does fit the profile. This whole diversity, inclusion and equity, D.I.E., die. And what they're, the people in the crosshairs are men, heterosexual men, white men are in the crosshairs, but all men black, white, whatever, are in the crosshairs. This has absolutely, positively nothing to do with wokeness, nothing to do with cancel culture. Your job was to be a reporter and a journalist. You failed at that job, objectively. You didn't do it. You did and the you opposite of everything you were supposed to do, and you right. lied. So what are you talking about? wokeness this is literally the wet blanket that these idiots throw over everything because they have nothing else to talk about that's substantive it always goes back to pff, wokeness the woke college mob. kid with pink hair hardy har har let's talk about this for another fucking 47 days straight how I, is this not stale to you people by now i also just want to point out the absurdity of pretending like the cuomo brothers are persecuted these guys well, are hold on. In the they are italian Okay, let's fair be fair. Enough. Fair enough. My people are suffering. I'm sorry Thank for you your very oppression. Much. Let my people go. But let's be clear about why these guys are in these incredible positions of fame and riches. Their fucking last name. Because of <laughs> yeah. Daddy. Yeah, Daddy I mean, Mario Cuomo was a, a governor well, in you New think York. Chris Cuomo is going to become a primetime anchor out of merit? Like, no. He's there because. It's of, like Megan McCain. He's male Megan McCain. That's what he is. Yeah, he's there because of who daddy was and who he had access to and had every advantage coming up. And yes, in part, that was because he was a white male born into a prominent, wealthy family that was well-connected in New York. And so the idea that you would paint the Cuomo brothers, who are the epitome of, of entitlement. Like entitlement and nepotism as somehow... Fucking victims. Look at these victims over here. Somehow persecuted victims. And also, to that, to that point as well, like Andrew Cuomo, the media fucking loved this guy. Oh my god! The way that and by he the was way, propped up, and they held on to that for so long after it was so clear that he was a bad actor. And he wasn't fired; he was quote indefinitely suspended. Right. They chose those words carefully because my guess is, if they're gonna bring back the guy who beat his meat on a Zoom call in front of all of CNN, they're gonna bring back Chris Cuomo eventually. Okay, so it's 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 sort of misstated up front, and nobody even talks about the possibility that maybe this guy actually isn't gone for good. I think he's coming back. Uh, I think he is coming back. But I think that they'll probably wait for the fury to die down, and then when they feel like he's been chastened enough, they will bring him back. And I because, made that same prediction on my show. I think yeah, he's going to be back eventually. I think so too. But let me get to the ultimate irony and hypocrisy of what these idiots are babbling about here. They bring up. Ugh, he's the wrong complexion. He's, you know, he's a heterosexual white male. And they bemoan that others do identity politics as you're the ones who are doing identity politics right now. You're doing the exact thing that you say you hate right now. Nobody who is, you know, in favor of Chris Cuomo being let go is playing identity politics. They're saying you're supposed to be a reporter and a journalist. You didn't do it. You failed at your job. Goodbye. Then these guys bring up identity politics, ironically, as they bemoan 
identity politics. Right. You are the ones playing the woke game. He brings up wokeness. Like, this is what you're doing right now. The reason Chris Cuomo got let go was because he looked after his brother and it's, it's his white skin and it's his heterosexuality. Listen, I got white skin. I'm heterosexual. I'm not fucking oppressed. I'm just fine over here. And I guarantee you, the overwhelming majority of people who fit those characteristics would say the same thing because most people don't play identity politics. Most people just feel like a normal person. Yes. And, you know, I mean, we could play this game all day long. Mark Lamont Hill was fired. For, for a comment CNN. critical of Israel and pro-Palestine. And exactly. he was let go like that when, you know, he he wasn't given the chance. Like, Rick Santorum was ultimately let go, but he was given the chance to sort of, like, apologize and whatever. So if you wanted to play that game, you could. But the bottom line here is that Chris Cuomo failed at his job. It became manifestly obvious. It had already been manifestly obvious, but they managed to resist the pressure for a little while. It just became too blatant. He lied to them. He lied to his audience. He was unable to cover the stories that were really important in an objective way, covering up for his brother and using his professional network to do so. It was inexcusable. And ultimately, even CNN felt too ashamed to continue. If they didn't fire him after these new revelations, Tucker would have covered the new revelations and insisted, how the hell does this guy still have a job? Because his whole thing is just like, CNN bad. I get it. I talk about it all the time. Virtually every segment I do on CNN, I say CNN bad, okay? But you can't just be a contrarian and work backwards from your conclusion all the time because that's intellectually dishonest, which is exactly what Tucker Carlson is. Yes. And also, you know, they, there's also this instinct now to wave your hand at any sort of sexual abuse or sexual harassment allegations. The like details of the all... Cuomo one are like, look, I'm, I'm, I agree that you have to evaluate everything on a case by case basis and be objective. It's not I, I never, you know, signed in, uh, signed on to the whole like believe all women. Believe, what does that even mean? Believe all women. You have to evidence matters like facts matter about the situation. But when you look at all of the claims and you go through them with a fine tooth comb, are there maybe two or three of them that are not fair? Sure. But are plenty of them super questionable and super fair? Yes. Yes, indeed. And you even have records of, you know, a state trooper who was moved up to be in proximity to him. You have all of the supporting evidence and woman after woman after woman who made claims. So there is no doubt that there was plenty of wrongdoing going on there. So listen, family loyalty is fine. He could have resigned his job. He could have taken a leave of absence. He could have been upfront with his audience, upfront with the network. He didn't do any of that. And belatedly, much belatedly, he's paying some kind of a price. Although like yeah. you, I think he will be back. And Tucker Carlson, go hang out with Chris Cuomo at your yacht club, where I'm sure you're both members. Yes. It